Hello, I'm Matteo and today I want to talk to you about a project that has me very excited and uh, we worked in this project in collaboration with one of our clients at Lullbot and uh, it is about streamlining and standardizing the process of managing JavaScript applications with the goal of making decoupled, progressive decoupling easier and more manageable. And uh, we are open sourcing the code today and I want to talk to you about, uh, give you a quick overview of what this is about and how this can be useful for you. I will probably rush through many of the parts, but that's okay. I plan to do follow-up videos on uh, each one of the parts. So there are three parts on this uh, explanation. One is developing a JavaScript application. The second is registering this JavaScript application so Drupal and others can consume it and embed it in it. And the third part is uh, I'm going to be uh, demoing how to use it in Drupal. So editors can, without any code interaction, uh, embed JavaScript applications that are being developed outside of Drupal inside of the Drupal without uh, doing really doing anything, uh, no deployment even. Uh, so let's try to dive in. I'm going to be showing some some code and talking about uh, the projects in GitHub. So all the code that drives this lives in this uh, JS widgets organization and inside of the JS widgets repo inside of it, uh, we have all the code that drives all this, but that's not the interesting part. So the interesting part is that we have a, an example widget. Uh, so let's start there. Uh, an example widget, a widget can be, uh, we call widget this uh, embedded JavaScript applications. And uh, widget can be any JavaScript application uh, that has, that meets uh, some requirements. And uh, those are uh, explained here. I won't go into those. It has to have um, an entry point uh, inside of the JavaScript folder and stuff like that. But if you go to this project and you click use this template, you will have a starter point for your JavaScript application. And the main advantage of using this is that this comes with a CI included. Uh, and uh, this uh, will have all you need uh, for running the tests for your and linting your application, but also to deploying the application using semantic release, which means that uh, using this project, you will have uh, an enforced commit message structure. Uh, so let's see the commits. You see uh, it has like these prefixes and it will use semantic release to calculate the release that you will be putting out whenever you merge into master. So when I merge into master, a release is created automatically with me, uh, for me, and uh, this number, the version number is, um, is updated. And that will be very important because when we register an application, we will do so with version numbers. Uh, so, Let's see what this is uh, about. So the example is very simple. It has here um, the main component. Uh, you'll see it. It's not very long, but it has some stuff. It has uh, it has media. It has it has some dynamic data that will be. Uh, will be populated by the editor when embedding inside of Drupal. And uh, it has some static strings that are uh, translated using React International. So uh, it it's not much, but, but it's something. And the project also comes with uh, this idea of having a, a page where you can put your widget just to demo it without having to go to Drupal to demo it and show it to stakeholders. So uh, let's click on here. Uh, whenever I deploy, I merge into master, this also deploys into the GitHub pages, the demo HTML, and it looks like this. So imagine that this is the whole web page and this is where you want your widget to go. So this is what we saw earlier. This is a button with this dynamic uh, text that I have put in the embedding HTML. And uh, we can even uh, go and here 
in the network. Let's see if this works. Uh, let's say good 3G. Gonna reload this and you'll see the spinner uh, while it's loading and that it, it loads. Um, so this is the JavaScript application that I want to embed in my Drupal. But to do so, I need to register this application or put it inside of the widget registry. Drupal will talk to the widget registry and will know how to ingest these, these JavaScript applications and how to render them in Drupal through the widget registry. And what is that is, um, let me go here. Uh, it's uh, a registry, it's just a list of a list of references to JavaScript applications. So this is another example module that you can just click here, use this template just like the other one, and uh, clone it to your uh, your username or organization in GitHub, and it start working. And here the CI is even more important uh, because this uses uh, the project that I showed initially to compile and so it goes into this metadata registry.json. This is where you will put references to your JavaScript applications. So the registry takes this input, goes to this project, to this GitHub project. Uh, you could also put the tarball URL directly if you're not using GitHub, but in here we are assuming that we use GitHub releases. So we will take this uh, uh, the repo, the GitHub repo for the JavaScript application. It will go to the GitHub releases for the version that you're saying here. It will download the tarball for that. It will uh, decompress it, run npm install, run npm build, and then write some metadata out and upload it to a place uh, that will be, in this case, GitHub pages, but you could upload it wherever you want, S3, cloud object storage, or you could upload it to your personal server. And then that URL, the one for your personal server, cloud object storage, S3, or GitHub pages, is what will paste into Drupal. So when we merge a pull request, uh, that will, let's go in, for instance, in here, that will create a CI process and you see that it will deploy to GitHub pages. And first it will build the registry locally and it will tell you all the widgets processed, etc. So another nice thing is that you want to have a QA workflow. And uh, for that, the boilerplate uh, provides you a solution. It has two branches, one called Sandbox and one called Production. And via the config module, uh, Node.js module, it lets you set some default configuration where things are. So by default, everything is Sandbox. See, Sandbox. But when you merge into Production, the CI process will instead use this values. So what ends up happening is that you can, while you're working, you first update here the registry.json uh, for uh, and merge it in on top of the sandbox branch and that will deploy to the sandbox environment. So your lower environments, let's say your stage Drupal environment, talks to the sandbox widget registry which I have it linked here, and this is what it will look like. So your lower environment in Drupal will uh, see, okay, what are the JavaScript applications that can, I can embed? So we have the example widget, uh, which is in this version, and this is where I will find all of the assets, and these are the, the paths of the assets. So and there, uh, it, that is how Drupal will know about this. When we promote uh, the, so we test that in uh, our stage environment in Drupal and we see that it works. And then that's when we merge the content of Sandbox 
on top of production and then production has uh, a different set of uh, versions. Maybe it has some minor versions. It's behind on some minor version while you're testing, and uh, therefore you can have uh, a proper QA process uh, with this decoupled, uh, uh, progressive decoupled approach. So um, I'm going to take this, copy a link location to the uh, widget registry, and I'm going to go to Drupal. So this is the final part. Uh, there are a couple of widget modules. Uh, these three modules, widget ingestion will monitor the widget registry uh, for changes on it using cron and then widget instance, so widget type will ha will contain the metadata for each of the widgets. This metadata here will be replicated inside of a, a custom entity and then widget instance is what we will embed. So let's install them and I'm gonna configure it and the only configuration that it needs is uh, the JSON URL, the URL to the JSON that I copied, have in my clipboard. So I'm gonna go here, there is this new dropdown Oops, interactive components. And I'm going to go to the widget ingestion settings. And here I'm going to paste this URL, save configuration. And now I'm going to go here and I'm going to ingest. So before I ingest, I want to show you that I don't have any widget type. But upon ingestion, it says that it inge ingested this one. So I refresh here and uh, see that it's the correct version and it's pulling from sandbox and now i'm off to creating stuff so have created a block type custom block type that contains here uh, that is called widget block so let's configure that one and i'm gonna add a field it's gonna be a reference to the new to the new widget instance entity. I'll say this was, uh, for a widget type, save field settings and make it requir required. Save, now I'm gonna check on the form display. I'm gonna say that, let's say that it's uh, inline entity form simple. That's gonna do a nice editorial experience. And now in order to render it, I'm gonna render it without a, la uh, a label and uh, entity rendered entity with preview, which is another project uh, that I worked with uh, with this client. Uh, it's a project called Entity Reference Preview that lets you embed entities and have them be previewed when, while you're uh, previewing a draft. I have um, a video about that. Uh, if you're curious about it, go check that. So I have uh, configured my block here. We're very close. I'm going to go to content. I have a basic page that I'm managing with Layout Builder. So I'm going to click here in Layout uh, so you can see nice uh, blocks. I have this here. Uh, add block. And now I'm going to go create a custom block widget block and if everything go, goes as expected um, oh we have a why do we have this this in here we don't need the the body fill well that's okay we should probably get rid of it hmm. I might have done something incorrectly for the form. All right, let me go back here quickly. Now, block types, manage form display. Yep. So it's for the, am I pointing to the right entity widget? instance okay that makes more sense few um <laughs> all right um 
let's let's see now. I'm gonna resave this. Uh, not sure what problems might cause if you change the type on the entity reference once it's created. But I'm sure we are about to find out. Hopefully it works well. So I'm gonna go to layout and I'm gonna create custom block. Ah, that looks better. So I'm gonna call this I don't know widget example. And now remember that we might have many JavaScript applications. We just um, we just have one in our registry, but we could have many. So while creating a block to in, uh, inject a JavaScript application, we need to uh, select which type of application we want. In our case, we only have example widget. And notice that I said that we'll have the chance to configure that uh, we configured this text here. Instead of click here, uh, we'll say, please click something like that. And uh, we're going to add the block and uh, the, well, that's loading. I'm going to save the layout. And there we go. We injected our JavaScript, JavaScript application. Now, if I were to go and make changes to this code here, let's say that I want to change, uh, go to the components. And in here, uh, the, this is React, by the way. Uh, let's say I want to change this text, or I want to change this for, from an H1 to an H2. I would save. That would uh, I, I would make a PR for this that will ultimately end up merging on top of the master branch in here. That will create a release, right? And as a front-end developer or as a JavaScript developer, uh, I would need to go to the registry. And in the registry, I would make a PR inside of metadata to update the version to the version that I just created that contains the H2 instead of the H1. And then once that's merged in Sandbox, and run crans, uh, sorry, and <laughs> cran run, runs, I would update this, and then this would automatically uh, update from H1 to H2. And not only that, but if I add a new widget to the registry, I have to do nothing, and now I can start selecting in here the new widget type without doing anything, just allowing the uh, cron process to run, it will import the new widgets. And uh, that happens in Sandbox and in production. So that's it. I hope you're ex as excited as I am with this. And uh, let's see what stuff we can build as a community moving forward. Thank you. And let me know what you think.